can you opine on film critic Roger Ebert? Well, Roger Ebert, uh, uh, as you know, about six, well, five and a half, well, cl closing in on six years ago, had done a, a post on me. And it's interesting because uh, I'm doing this series of Dan Schneider video interviews. And the precursor to that was a series of 41 written interviews that I did, just called the Dan Schneider interviews. And when I first started that, uh, one of the top five or six people that I had on my list to interview was Roger Ebert. And so I had tried to interview him uh, back in 07 when I started that interview series. I didn't know at the time, because I don't pay attention to celebrity gossip, that he, at the time, was suffering from, uh, I think it was tongue, tongue or jaw cancer that eventually killed him in, in 2013. Um, and uh, uh, ironically, some guy who's been stalking me for I don't know how many years, uh, uh, emailed Ebert some kind of uh, some kind of bet or something, and then that provoked Ebert to to actually re look over my reviews or something, and he found uh, you know however many fourteen fifteen reviews where I had mentioned Ebert and sometimes positively, sometimes negatively, and he he did this post on it that now has over three thousand uh, comments, most of them <laughs> I not too ironically unrelated to me. Or, or to film, uh, but uh, Ebert himself was uh, a good populist critic in his prime. He started writing in the late '60s. He got his TV show with uh, with uh, Gene Siskel in '76 or 70, 75 or '76. I remember it went national sneak previews in the late '70s, and it was the first time you ever saw movie critics that were not on, you know, the local TV news and. So it, it it was pioneering in that sense, although in a, another sense, it was a lot of people have bemoaned it as the death knell of serious film criticism because it eventually became, at the time they didn't have it, but it became the thumbs up or thumbs down kind of crap. Um, but initially, uh, that wasn't the case. Uh, um, then, I think about 10 years later in the early to mid 80s, Siskel and Ebert left PBS. <clears throat> they started their own uh, a production company so that they could keep all the profits. And so Ebert became one of these, you know, he became a millionaire uh, because of, uh, of his own show. And uh, for the most part, uh, I've, I sta have stated, and I, I agree that Siskel was better in understanding film. He wasn't quite as good at, at, as expressing his opinions, uh, whereas Ebert, you know, did he won his Pulitzer and he was a nice guy. He, he did, uh, uh like I said, mention uh, you know, my website, he, James Baradinelli, who I did interview for my Dan Schneider, uh, regular interviews, the written interviews, uh, he, he promoted him, but then he also again promoted a lot of crap. I mean, he, he, at, towards the end of his life, my feeling was, and I had written a review of the, the last, uh, film critic show that he did, which he didn't appear on because he couldn't speak anymore. So he hired this like movie babe and then this young Russian kid who didn't know shit about films, just, you know, Dmitry Vishnevesky or whatever the hell his name was. And it was terrible. It was just a terrible, terrible show and it didn't last. And uh, uh, thankfully it didn't last. But in a certain way, you know, Ebert almost seemed to, you know, ruin his own legacy. But uh, all in all, you know, I think he was a positive. But uh, I do remember there was uh, a few websites that uh, graded Ebert's reviews. Uh, and the ironic thing is, during the heyday of the late 60s, early 70s films, when American film had its last golden age, he gave out very few four-star four reviews. I think they were four-star reviews, not five stars, that he gave in his uh, movie reviews. <clears throat> In the 21st century, he gave out something like four times as many four-star reviews, according to these websites that tracked his his uh, reviews. And, you know, of course, the last 15 years, the last 25 or 30 years have been absolute garbage in American cinema. So I think towards the end, Siskel fell into the trap of sort of the old man wistfully uh, looking for something uh, that wasn't there any longer. So that that's my opinion. 
uh, a nice guy. He went out of his way. I think he was did a lot of positive uh, for things, but uh, I, I think he probably should have gotten off the stage a little bit earlier. Um, I think I think uh, I think that was would was probably best for him.